Do you like to be different? Yeah! Do you crave something that separates you from the 4231 Gagan pressing crowd? Yes! Well then you're in luck because I cooked up this beast that has me well on the way to a quadruple in my first year in Japan. Now if you want to see if I can cash in on that promise, you have to watch the Twitch streams, but I am top of the league and have only lost two matches all year. Yeah! All while being stylishly different. <laughs> of course. Thank you. By the end of this video, I can promise you, you will be much more comfortable designing your own asymmetrical tactic or just using a modified version of this one. It'll separate you from the crowd. It'll make you feel cool. And you know what else does that? Manscaped's new release, the Lawnmower 5.0. I have it on very reliable authority. It changes lives. And that reliable authority is me. This bad boy is the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. It's pretty much a spaceship to take care of your space balls. And you can join the 9 million men worldwide that trust Manscaped by using the link in the description to get 20% off and free shipping. But why, Zealand? Why would we want to do that? Well, I'll tell you. You've heard me talk about the Lawnmower 4.0's skin safe blade on this channel. Well, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra has dual skin safe blades for twice the skin safeness. You of course have the standard trimmer blade to go for just your normal trim, or you can use the new foil blade to go for a skin tight, smooth finish. It's what I use to shave the microphone after every video. Perfect. It comes equipped with multiple LED lights, so you'll never be in a setting where you're not able to illuminate whatever you happen to be shaving like a microphone. And if you travel a lot, like I do, this comes with a traveling case on your order. And it also has a travel safe mode. So if it accidentally gets bumped in your luggage, it's not just gonna turn on and run out of battery. It is the gold standard of men's grooming, which is why I look so freaking fantastic all the time. And you can get yours for 20% off and free shipping with the link in the top of the description. Thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this channel. And thank you to you for being interested in asymmetrical tactics. And for you to be able to pull off these asymmetrical tactics or just use this one, there are five tenets you need to follow. And the first tenet, perhaps the most important of all, be able to account for basic tactics. There are certain unassailable facts about playing Football Manager 2024, and that is that you are probably going to be playing against a 442, a 4231, or a 433. No matter what asymmetrical tactic you have designed, you need to be able to accommodate defending those three tactics, which means defending two striker systems like a 442, defending systems that put a player in between your lines like a 4231, and defending a system that really tries to isolate your wings in a 433. Now, if we turn our attention to the tactic I've designed, we accomplish this because we have a solid block of foreign defense, although it's probably not who you're thinking of when you first look at it. You see, the new role in Football Manager 24 is the inverted wing back, which allows us to set up a pretty balanced block of four in the back, but it doesn't involve our left back, Nagato. You see, the two center backs and the inverted fullback make up a more centrally located back three when we are in possession of the ball. The left center back is gonna take up the role of a wide center back on the left. The right center back is gonna take up the role of a central center back. And the inverted fullback on the right is going to be the right center back when we're in possession. The defensive midfielder, a ball winner on defend in this case, is able to screen in front of that back line to disrupt hold up play, to lock up a potential number 10 and to keep the back line from being so flat that if my midfield gets penetrated we hate when that happens then there isn't just a free run at our back line having that defensive midfielder on ball winner allows them to quickly close down any potential openings and also get wide to the wing if necessary because they're just chasing after the ball like a golden retriever and the fact that the inverted fullback and the opposite center back from that inverted fullback both play like wide center backs mean we have a natural cover and a natural antidote to strong wing play that can typically come from a 4-3-3. And this block of four only needs to be able to hold its assignments defensively for long enough for my formation to recover, in which point I'll have a back four again. Nagato will get back and my wingers will get involved in defense and my playmaker over there on the left is going to get involved in defending as well. But despite the fact that this tactic looks weird, everybody is in a decent starting position when we lose the ball to be able to cover everything and get everybody reset. Now, if you're wondering if you have to use a ball winner. You don't. I uh, Just with the amount of pressing in the incredibly high back line I've been playing this particular tactic with at this particular time, a ball winner helps cut off plays quickly before they're able to utilize the space we're giving them in behind. When you're building asymmetrical tactics, you need to start with defense first and account for these three tactics. I have no idea if that 
lined up with what Reese and Tom were able to do, but I think it did. Your second tenet of asymmetry is sound buildup play. You are going to be pressed. That is a fact of life, not only in Football Manager 24, but in real life. Everybody's pressing all the time. So how are you going to deal with it? People that go for asymmetrical tactics, myself included for a long time, often think about the insane mismatches and runs you're able to create putting pressure on the opposing back line. But it's very easy to forget about the fact that you need to get the ball there first. And as the modern game progresses more into pressing, that becomes ever more important. Now, there are a couple of tactical decisions we've made here that have to do with buildup play. For starters, the only reason the right wing is not further up the field and is deeper is is because he is now able to receive the ball at a deeper position and then carry it up to advance where our possession is. If he's all the way up here on the same side as Kunimoto, well then we have an inverted fullback on that side who's going to stay pretty deep and is not going to occupy that next level. Where on the left side, Nagato is going to occupy that next level. So he is then available for a pass at a different level than before. In the midfield, we're already okay. We've got a deeper midfielder and a higher midfielder that provide two different depths that we can connect the pass to. That gives us three players players in the back line as part of our buildup, and then another wall of four players that are available to receive a pass, which makes us, if we're able to pass well and make the right decisions, very, very, very difficult to press against. The other option is, of course, to try and play over the top. This will require a target forward or a wide target man in very rare cases that you can direct your playing out to and then have them knock the ball down to other players who should ideally be in close proximity to them. If it's a wide target forward, then you want somebody like a wing back or a Metsala. If it's more central target forward, a uh, number 10 or a second strike partner is basically a necessity. Whatever you do, this is especially important to think about in FM20 because turnovers can lead to huge disastrous problems going the other direction because it feels like players don't quite turn on a dime when they're getting back anymore. Tenant number three, then this is the fun one when it comes to asymmetry, creating uncomfortable defensive situations for your opponent. Now the players are smarter and more fluid in FM24. This is something that in the release of the new features they talked about endlessly. And while this makes it harder to catch the opposition team in a bad position, it also allows asymmetrical tactics to be much more effective. The players on your team are not married to these weird positions that you're putting them in, and they're able to recover more naturally and play good defense or find goal scoring opportunities. And after all, isn't the whole point of an asymmetrical tactic to show the other team a look that they're just not used to being able to deal with? And in my tactic, this comes from two things. One, the offset number 10 that we have here playing played by Nishimura, and the wing-back winger combination on the left. That second part isn't necessarily part of the asymmetrical stuff, but it also is. Give me a second. But first, the number 10, and the offset helps create an overload on the right side and forces the center backs to make really tough decisions. A contributing factor to this is that we have a forward that is playing either as a deep-lying forward, false nine, complete forward, whatever, somebody that's going to receive the ball and look to hold up play. Anderson Lopes is very strong and decent technically, so he receives the ball and either holds it or faces up against the defense. This draws the attention of the center back, and if the wrong one happens to look over for too long, they're screwed. Medina's on the near side of the field. His job, once we are in possession, is to go screaming forward because he's a winger on attack. And now that Anderson Lopes holding the ball up has drawn the eyes of Shimakawa, the left center back on the other team, we have a two-for-one overload on this side of the field. The number 10 keeps streaking forward, gets the ball, Medina's wide open, gives Medina the ball, goal. And once that left center back has lost focus on defending the left side of the field, it's over. As long as we put our passes together, we should be able to score. And obviously, if the left center back decides to stay with the number 10, well then, Anderson Lopes is right in the middle of the field. If he angles a run behind that left center back, he can get into an acre of space. The wing back and winger on the left side in FM23 would have been basically ineffectual. They would have been running into each other and it just wouldn't have worked. In FM24, it's a completely different story. Not only is my advanced winger under the player instruction to cut inside once he receives the ball, opening up space for the wing back, if the winger doesn't receive the ball and stays holding in the wide area, the wing back will notice there's somebody already in that area, but since they're still dedicated to getting up the field, they'll naturally underlap. Here's the triangle. There's the advanced playmaker. There's my winger. 
and there is my wing back. Now watch where the wing back goes. The center back is still too narrow, paying attention to what the playmaker is doing while my wing back is taking off into that vacant space. And because they're playing too high of a line, he's just in on goal immediately. That doesn't really have to do with the asymmetry of the tactic. It's just cool. And you should probably utilize that if you have the personnel to do it. And the last tidbit in this section, we do have a two-tiered midfield. So if we're advancing the ball fairly quickly, the advanced playmaker is sagging behind what eventually turns into a front four with the wings, attacking midfielder and striker. When we're in possession for a very long time, the advanced midfielder joins that. And we have five men applying pressure to the back line with that ball winning midfielder setting the edge of the offense and essentially becoming the playmaker at that point. No matter what phase of the game we're in, we have somebody keeping a lid on it with a bunch of options in front of them, making the other team uncomfortable. Tenant number four, offset to balance your formation. One adjustment in an asymmetrical tactic is often going to have a knock-on effect. If you just move one person out of position, you're probably just going to end up with a giant hole somewhere else. For example, in our particular tactic, the defensive midfielder is offset because it provides more balance than if they were central. And is the defensive midfielder even really that offset? Because what this tactic is kind of a modified version of is a 4-2-3-1. With three adjustments, we're there. And so what we've essentially created is a particularly dramatic midfield pairing of two. But we've dropped the defensive midfielder or offset the defensive midfielder from a normal spot in the center of defensive midfield because it allows everybody a little bit more room to play. It doesn't compromise us defensively. If there is a midfielder in this spot, they have four different people around them that can react to them depending on what direction they want to go. Particularly a ball winner here will step forward to contest somebody that's sitting in this area. But because this player is dropped, the attacking midfielder has more room to drop in to receive the ball. And in possession, the ball winning midfielder still has plenty of room to step forward and try and make a play. Obviously, they won't go all the way into the box, but as we've covered at times, the ball-winning midfielder in this tactic will be the playmaker, particularly on that right side of the field. This is a congested mess. This just doesn't cover the field well enough and leaves a bit of an open channel. That provides more decent coverage of the entire field, particularly the fact that in FM24, when the advanced playmaker's further up, the defensive midfielder will slide over because there's just more of a positional understanding in FM24 than there was before. I've worded this in a pretty high-minded way, but in essence, this makes a lot of sense. Just make sure that you can cover everything. And you might have to offset players in order to do that, but that's okay. We're already down the rabbit hole of asymmetry. And tenant number five, match your players. The only reason I came up with this tactic is because it was a balanced way to create good offense and defense with a weird collection of players that I had. And then because I liked the way this tactic was playing in the transfer window, I went and bought a couple of players that fit into it. But the initial roster that I was given when I got to the J League, this tactic fit all of those players. And it's not just about your starting 11. If you have a roster of 20 to 25 players, come up with a tactic where you don't just have a starter, but you also have an accomplished backup at each position. You never wanna come up with a tactic where you only have one player that can take care of that one role. That is of course, with the number of injuries in FM24, a disaster waiting to happen. And with that, you are ready to tackle your own asymmetric tactic. If you wanna watch me mess with my own insane tactics like this one, you can check out the Twitch link in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe. If you're wondering if you should get FM24, this video is probably going to be a big help to you. I don't worry, I'm very surprised I made it too.